happy Thursday, long time no see. So it is about four o'clock. My hair looked a lot cuter today, but I just got rained on. I went to pick up the boys from school and we had to pick up one of Irma's boys. And when we took them back, they started playing outside and you know, five minutes turned into 30 and then dad picked them up and we just kind of were rushing. This is, this is the pace of my life. Rushing, like last minute stuff, ebbing and flowing, which is actually pretty fan. I've, I've, I've gotten pretty, pretty good at, you know, at it. You know, like we're just gonna kind of go with the flow. Okay, that, that's totally fine. Um, what's the flow? How long will it take? What do I have to wear? And is this okay? You know, <laughs> I can do it. How have you guys been? I had to take a minute to kind of just regroup, reground myself. If you guys follow us on Instagram, you know kind of what happened and it's it's just been a lot to process. And so turning on the camera and putting it in my face and being like, hey guys, let's talk about nothing. Sometimes doesn't sound that cool. We have a very exciting weekend planned and uh, we're gonna do it all together. But I also have to do some little updates for you guys. The first update is, hold please. You see this giant pile of ofness? Giant pile of ofness. Let's just pretend that's a word or an expression. I've somehow fallen onto certain brands PR lists or reappeared on their lists somehow. And uh, since I took a little bit of a, 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 a break from, from beauty content, I fell off like every PR list in the world. And somehow in the past, I would say week or two, I've gotten a lot of really exciting stuff. Like, where PR is exciting again? I'm like, what? Seriously? I thought you guys forgot about me. So, so you really were not sending me stuff on perp. <laughs> Cause I don't remember you asking me for my information. <laughs> you really did take me off your list and then remembered I existed. It's nice, I'm not complaining. I'm not, I'm really not. I know that may have sounded a little disrespectful and maybe a little ungrateful. I'm not, I'm just, I'm having a moment. So that's the first update. The other update is, I know you, you probably can't tell, but I finally fixed my teeth. And I met this doctor, this dentist. Oh my goodness. I was just walking out of Pilates one day and I saw that it said cotton dentistry now open and taking new patients. And I have been really annoyed with my regular dentist. It feels like I'm going to the DMV. They don't know who I am. I'm a number, the seats are tearing. It's just completely gone downhill. It used to be privately owned. Then it got bought out by Ideal Dental and the location is abhorrent it is awful and so i missed my last dental cleaning because i was like no i really don't want someone to jam their hands in my mouth tell me i need to pull all my wisdom teeth out tell me i, gr I gr grind my teeth and need a mouth guard even though i wear retainers and that uh i brush my teeth too hard and need to whiten my teeth like i don't i don't want to do that i i want I want a dentist that knows who I am and remembers that I'm coming in. So anyway, I was walking out of Pilates dying and I walked into Cotton Dentistry, not sponsored. They don't know that what I do for work. In fact, I don't think I even put that I was employed. I was like, I'm a dependent. This is my insurance. <laughs> and uh, oh my God, look at this. You guys probably can't tell, but if you go back on my vlogs before, uh, I had a little snaggle tooth down here, right? And I got him fixed with Invisalign, it, but he was kind of knocking out this tooth and this tooth just kept getting smaller and smaller. When I was little, I fell down and I broke this tooth and this tooth never matched this tooth. It was like half the size. Anyway, we got some composite or bonding put on them. I, I can't like talk and show you, but like, look at that. They're all the same length and they're not like, you can't even tell. I guess my worry was that I was gonna look like I had veneers and I just, I love how people look with veneers. I just know that I'm 90% like mouth. And if I were to jam some veneers in here, like I'd be 100% mouth and I can't carry that kind of weight, you know? <laughs> I can't carry that kind of veneer responsibility. I fixed my teeth. An update on our girl Mern. So if you guys have not followed us on Instagram, and you know, it's been a minute. So Ernie was diagnosed with carcinoma. Um, she had 
liver cancer is what we thought. And we went to a specialist, they did a CT scan on her and they gave us the good news that it seemed as though the tumor was operable and that it was in a good place in the liver where it could be removed. So we went ahead and scheduled her surgery and when they opened her up, it turns out that the cancer is actually not liver cancer. In fact, it is a very rare type of cancer that starts in the gallbladder and just spreads out aggressively everywhere else. So when they opened her up to see the liver, they checked all sides of it and they realized, oh, the tumor's here, but on the other side of the liver, there's a lot of little other, I don't even know how to describe them. She used a special word for it. It's kind of like when you, like cysts, they look little cysts. Opened her up and, you know, expecting to find the tumor right on her liver, it was actually completely, took over her entire gallbladder. It took over almost, I think she said 60 or 70% of her liver. It had spread and it was actually attached to her diaphragm. So if we were to remove the tumor completely, not only would it be a surgery that the likelihood of her not making it was much higher than the survivability about it. It's a bigger, bigger chance for her to die if we did the surgery. Not to mention that the surgery would need like mesh. So where, where they remove the tumor, she was gonna require to, to put mesh to hold everything together. The recovery would be in the hospital for months and it's gonna come back because it's carcinoma. And so the vet called and I just had a moment where I was like, Doctor habla español, <laughs> you know, cause I could hear her accent and she's like, yeah. And I'm like, okay, I'm just gonna ask you directly. If this were your dog, what would you do? She's like, oh my gosh, you know. She said exactly what she needed to say to me as a pet parent to make me feel like I have done what is within my capacity to do to save her life. And it was submitting her to this invasive surgery where she would probably not survive. And if she did, she'd be in the hospital for a few months, come home, and still only be with us for a few months. Or we could stitch her back up, send her home on hospice, and just give her an amazing life. And know that cancer isn't going to be what takes her from us. The cancer is pretty invasive at this moment, but it's not growing super fast. So once it does, you know, evolve a little bit more, then she may start having GI issues or may have, you know, liver issues or other things like that. We know what to look for and she's home now and she's happy and I think she knows. Maybe I'm just trying to naively wash myself of guilt, but something tells me that she knows that we love her and we did everything we could to make sure that we saved her to the best of our ability. She's she's good, you know, she's happy, she's home, she's eating. She's been eating a lot recently, like a lot. She's super hungry and she's happy and she's kind of getting her sparkle back, which is nice. We were having to tap her every few weeks. She would kind of fill up with fluid and her tummy would get really hard. And we'd have to go take her to the vet and they'd drain her. They'd drain three liters every time. Well, her surgery was three weeks ago and she hasn't filled with fluid. So either that's really, really good news or, or not, but she's happy. And I know when she was getting all yucky with fluid, she wasn't, she wasn't at her best. But actually, let me see if she wants to say hello. Where is my man? Donde esta el amor de toda mi vida, minga, minga? Mare, donde esta la mine? Mare, donde esta esa mine? Ana, esa la princesita de toda mi vida, eres tú? Eres tú? Oh, yeah! How are you feeling? Hey, do you consent to having your picture and your video on the internet? Do you consent? You want to show people your, your cool battle, battle scar? 
Oh, I know. It's so big. Well, it's so big, it makes you look so cool and dangerous. Yeah, are you my happy girl? Her hair is growing back so slowly. Well, let me see your tummy. You want to show everybody your tummy? Can we see? Oh, oh, you're shy, huh? Okay, we'll catch you later. You want us to catch your tummy later? Hey, what are you doing? Wait, hey, hey, put your taco down. This is the internet. This is this is the internet, but not only fans internet. Hey, ma'am, no, 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 Mern. Hello, Mern. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do, Mern? Hey, where are you going? Don't be scratching at your gut. Don't be scratching at your gut. If uh, you're a dog parent and don't do this in white pants, are you even are you even a dog parent? Do you want to tell them what we're gonna do today? Oh. Do you want to give me pink eye? <laughs> so, like I told you guys, it's four o'clock. We were actually invited to an early screening of air. I've been to a few early screenings before, and it's been a long time since I got invited to another one, and I told Parker about it. I was like, hey, do you want to go see this? Like, are you interested in all uh, in seeing this movie? So it's about Air Jordans, I think. Okay, don't quote me. <laughs> I just got the invite and I asked Parker if he wanted to go. That's all I know. I know it's a movie about Nike and the inception of the famous Airs. I wanna say Air Jordans because that just has like a nice nostalgic ring to it, you know? So we're gonna go see that today. It's Thursday. Yeah, it is Thursday. <laughs> we're going to go see that today on a Thursday like the wild adults that we are. And tomorrow is Friday. No idea what we're gonna do. Saturday is little man's birthday party. So we're all gonna gather up, go to main event. It's kind of like a bowling alley slash arcade slash I get super triggered and super like sensory overload in every possible way main event. And it's gonna be great. <laughs> Grandparents are gonna be there. All the parents are gonna be there. All the teammates are gonna be there. So it's gonna be fun. And uh, Sunday. I made it sound like we had this extravagant, really crazy weekend planned. But now all I can think about is movie premiere or early screening. I think it's an early screening and Daniel's birthday party. Yeah. We're actually waiting for like a really bad storm to hit. So I might want to just grab a hair tie, you know, just do everyone a favor and just get this out of my face. But I've missed you guys. <laughs> so has she. I've missed you guys. And I was telling Parker, I was like, look, we're going to this movie screening and uh, I'm going to vlog again because uh, my pandas, first of all, I miss them. And second of all, they need to know what's going on with Lamerne. I can't just leave you guys hanging with Wesley died. You know, like I know it's heavy, but <sighs> life, life goes on. Life goes on. I was actually talking to Irma the other day and she was telling me that, well, one of her sons is like super talented in baseball. I mean, competition talented and super just one of one of those children that you're just like wow that how do you not go around like just wearing a t-shirt with your kid's face on it you know like super talented she was telling me that they lost a competition that they went to and that he was pretty disappointed and i was telling her i'm like you know the interesting thing is and the hardest part to teach children is that the only time they learn is when they lose the only time that you grow is when you don't get your way. The only time that you know your life changes or there's forward motion or there's character development is when you hear no or when you get it wrong. And so it's nice to win and it's nice to get it right and, and always be the best. But if you're always the best, you're not gonna get any better. And so I was like, I know he may not see it that way. And, and one of the things they don't teach us when we become parents is some of the hardest lessons we have to teach our kids is when they're disappointed. They don't want to hear that. You know, they're not going to be like, okay, so you want me to be happy that I lost? It's like, no, uh, when you're an adult, you'll understand, you know, you can't be the best person in the room because if you're the best, 
you can't get any better. I uh, was talking to Mateo yesterday after his baseball game and I was like, buddy, why do you always walk it? Like you walk to first. He figures out a way to kind of lead the pitcher to get him to walk to first. He's like, because I suck at batting. And I was like, how do you know you suck at batting if you never try? He's like, well, I don't want to let my team down. I was like, you are letting your team down. And he's like, what, what do you mean? I was like, you're letting your team down because you're not trying your best. If you try your best and fail, you can only get better because you're going to keep trying your best. You know, I'm like, if you don't try your best, you're never going to know what your potential is. If you don't go out on, you know, on a limb or take a risk, you're not going to know how good you can get. And he was like, Like he didn't believe me. And I was like, the only way you disappoint your team is if you don't do your best. That's the only way to disappoint them. Oh, so you struck out? Yeah, but you tried your best. And next time you know how to do it differently. Or now you know what to practice and how to get better. You know, he uh, changed teams this season and he was so nervous because he wasn't the best player. And I was like, that's amazing because then you're gonna grow and you're gonna learn. So it sucks that the hardest, difficult, heaviest things in life are the ones that stay with us, but they also stay with us with good purpose and teach us what we need to learn and how to feel and how to grieve properly, you know, and how to navigate big feelings and big losses and big rejections and big no's and it doesn't feel good. Heck, it won't feel good when you're five and it's not gonna feel good when you're 55. Loss, tragedy, no, rejection, breakups. It's five or 55 is never gonna feel good. But the older we get, the more I think willing and capable we are to see that it's all part of this process and this, this thing called life that somehow ends up making sense at some point and you're like wow this is this is amazing so yeah i mean we miss wesley a ton and there's this giant giant hole in in our schedule of like jesus he used to keep us so on you know on top of things and 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 on schedule with his diabetes and his eating schedule and now we're left to our own devices and we are irresponsible mother <laughs> We look up and it's like eight o'clock and the girls are like, are you gonna feed us dinner? <laughs> what the heck? But it's been, a, it's been a gift. And so while there is a giant hole in my heart for Tatopo and Wesley, we were given such a gift and so much, so much of our life and time back. It's such a bizarre, you almost feel guilty enjoying your life now, you know, but I'm, I'm certainly not complaining. Anyway, uh, I was gonna put on makeup and look cute, but now that it's gonna rain, I'm like, mm, it's gonna rain. I'm probably gonna have to walk to the theater because it's not close by. And we're gonna be sitting in the dark. <laughs> I should probably find out more details about this movie so I can not look so asinine trying to explain it to you guys. But that's the scoop. Oh my God. <clears throat> Tell me you're old without telling me you're old sit on the floor for longer than five minutes. Look at this, my princess, princess. Look at this, is my little princess. I love your ears, I love your ears. I love your paws, I love your paws. I love your neck, I love your neck. I love your tummy, oh, I love your tummy, I love your tummy. That's my favorite, your tummy. I love your paws, your paw, oh, oh, okay. Oh, mom, you're so embarrassing. Mom, you're so embarrassing. That's not nice, mom. You know, you love my lovin'. You love my lovin'. Speaking of uh, being thankful for things in life and having them all make sense, this one has turned into the biggest cuddle monster. She'll sit in my lap and she lets me hold her and hug her. I'm like, Mern. See, look at her, her little paw. She's been, she's gotten so sweet. Don't worry, I'm not gonna tell anyone. It's not gonna affect your street cred. You're still a tough guy. Yeah, you're still so tough. Yes, you are. This is all it took. It took a walk from the living room through the dog gate 
Huh, don't be looking at my bra. I have to show you these bras, you guys, because if you, you're from, you're in the itty bitty titty committee with no boobs, like at all whatsoever, these bras are amazing. Okay, what I was gonna tell you is I got some shirts for Parker. This is not sponsored, by the way. Three shirts. There you go. Three shirts for $30 from Walmart. Now, I think I wanna do like a hidden camera bit where like I hide the camera and tell Parker, look, I got you these shirts, what do you think? To me, they're very resort, very fun summer, hang out by the pool, like we're gonna go sit on a patio. Parker will let me dress him in whatever I decide. He's like, I don't care as long as you think I'm hot. That's it, that's all that matters. But he does have a face where he will fully disclose how he truly feels. He genuinely will wear it even if he doesn't like it because for him, my happiness outweighs his. I know, codependency, enmeshment, whatever, get your toxic theories out of here. We love each other. <laughs> and so, but I, I, I make it a point for, to encourage and nurture what he likes. And the man has a very deep, hidden Tommy Bahamas white man smoking a cigar on a beach saying margaritas and don't estal baño and la cerveza, you know? So <laughs> I think these might fit the bill. And if he hates them, it won't matter because they're $10. Like what the heck? Okay, so if you guys have a man that has like a fun poolside grill outside, you're going on vacation, I found these at Walmart and they're that really flowy, don't cling to your skin material. Look at this one, Parker and Baby Blue, my goodness. Baby Blue, denim or red, I want to bite his face off. So I hope, I hope he likes them. And they actually had like 10 different styles. I had to narrow it down to three. They just got delivered today. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna like hidden camera you guys like right here and be like look babe look what i got you and then we'll boom like psh, capture his face and see what he does what do you think that's a good plan right okay i'm gonna go charge you guys because you're overheating and my battery's low and i need to find the tripod and i need to drape you guys and cover you uh if we're gonna if we're gonna get this right are we are we on board we're on board i've said bye to you like 17 times so i'm not gonna say bye to you i'm just gonna be like <laughs> Catch you in a little bit. Two hours later. Hey, I got you something. I need you to keep an open mind. Ooh, colorful. The open mind is they were only $10. <laughs> Ooh, this one's super soft. Right? This one is too. What do you think? Is it too crazy? <laughs> no, I like it. It's I like cute, it right? It's like yeah. bandanas. I thought maybe for um, summer or the pool or vacation or whatever, they were $10. Oh, naked. Oh, this is like putting on pillowcase. So I'm like, okay, they were $10. Maybe they won't wash and dry and stay the same. But I know you like that kind of fabric with the- Yeah, it's good wooden. I was, I was scared it would be too big because the fabric makes it look super billowy. It looks good. Yeah. Ooh, just good on my nips. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I like that one. Oh, yeah, this is newspapers. But with palm trees. Gee. And then I like, I knew you were going to like this one because it's, you know. Oh, yeah, it's blue. Big blue. Yeah. I hid in camera to you. Did you see? What? I hid in camera to you. Oh. <laughs> Censored. I was telling them, I'm like, oh, I'm going out on a limb here. I don't know if he's going to like it. So let's do a, let's do a hid in camera bit. Don't worry, I'll censor your nipples. Or not. Well, what are you don't the, know. What are the views? Well, now we got to link $10 shirts for all the, see, like the Mr. Pandas. Oh, yeah. oh, that one's really pretty. You could even wear that with like nice um, khakis uh -huh. for like church in the summer. That's a really pretty one. Oh, this is nice. That's pretty. This is nice. And they had like 12 different patterns. They and perfect. Um, I don't, I think, uh, 
Walmart does this like thing on the app where it's like, would you like this? And I'm like, yes, I would like that. And then it, they were $12 and I put three in my cart and it dropped it down to $10 each. Wow. I know. Score, huh? Yeah. I like that one because it's like my favorite lime green color. Well, it's my favorite pastel mint and then my favorite chartreuse color. It's like my two personality, one of my many. Um, I like them because they're different. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, they were different than like your usual summer shirts that you wear. Yeah. That are just I'm kind of... That are just, you know, well, they're, they're neutral. They're very universal. There's no crazy pattern. They might be harder to match, but I mean, they're cool. Well, thank you. Yeah. I'm glad you like them. I like them. Well, I'm glad you like them for you, not because I like them. <laughs> yeah, it's silky. Yeah. I'm like, how, how am I going to ruin these in the wash? <laughs> I'll just let you do it. God, you guys I can't believe we're out and it's nine o'clock now actually I was going to wait to talk to you guys about this because I'm like I'm tired and I'm probably yawning I can't wait Parker one to five stars what would you say well, I get five that was good yes yeah we're, we're about to die me too you guys <laughs> I told you when I started to vlog I was like zero percent of me has any interest in watching this movie, Parker said it might be a good idea. So here we are trying something new for a date. It was such a good, wholesome family movie. And for me, it was very nostalgic too because I remember growing up with the Michael commercials. I mean, the soundtrack alone of that movie is like the flashback, the clothes. They didn't even say a bad word, right? There wasn't a single cuss word in the movie. I think even our kids that aren't born in the 80s or 90s that can't relate to like Michael Jordan, they don't even know. Okay. <laughs> I had a conversation with a few fifth grade turds a few months ago and they asked me who was a better athlete. Uh, Steph, Steph, Steph Curry? Steph Curry? Or Michael Jordan? <laughs> ah. Listen, <laughs> I don't even know who you're talking about right now. And that's not to diss any current talent. It's just to say that once in a lifetime, God puts all of the super magic sauce into a person and then they become the epitome of whatever that thing is. Like, I don't know, basketball, Michael Jordan, um, human rights. I could say a lot of people here and I don't want to offend nobody, but you know what I'm saying? Like. There's, the, the, like Mother Teresa, that's a good example why well, I, I won't hurt anybody's feelings. And so, I'm like, that's just one of those things that you should, just, just don't compare, just leave them alone. I mean, the movie was so good. So, if you guys are looking for a good family movie to watch, Ben Affleck's in it, Viola Davis, Matt Damon, um, Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker, oh my gosh, he was so good. What's in it, Jason Bateman? Jason Bateman? Yep. That's him, right? It was awesome. I love the way it was done. I love the way it was written. I love the way it progressed. It wasn't one of those movies that's like playing with your feelings and like full of suspense. It was just like a good, easy watch. And now I need to go buy some Air Jordans. Go see the movie. Where are your Nikes? Um, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm so happy. So Amazon invited us. It was courtesy, which was awesome. This isn't sponsored or anything. Uh, they just invited us. The movie's coming out April 5th, I believe. So it was a pre-screening, early release. I don't remember what they called it. I think it was a pre-screening. And they were like, hashtag and, and tell your friends. Just don't leak any footage until after, you know, because of copyright. I'm like, no, uh-uh. Y'all gotta go see it yourselves. So I'm just gonna throw up a little picture poster <laughs> of the movie so you know what I'm talking about. But it was good. Definitely recommend. I, Parker, do I like going to the movies? You uh, most certainly do not. <laughs> I have a drug <laughs> kicking and screaming every time. <laughs> Drag, drug, drugged, dragged. Forced. Forced. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I've slowly become my mother. I remember her saying when we were growing up, I hate going to the movies, I'd rather be home. There's other things I can do and I can get up and I don't fall behind on my work. And, and then I have to like, I can't pause it to go pee. <laughs> I've become my mom. I'm hi mom. <laughs> but it was it was really good. I can't I can't say enough. I, I didn't think that this is how I was gonna walk out at 9 p.m. super tired, excited that and, and relieved that I wore my glasses so that I wouldn't miss a single little bit of that. It gives a lot of backstory on Nike too, what it means and the logo and uh, you know the force behind it, the vision. I mean even down to the sneaker engineer. TJ, AJ, something like, he had a cool name. Um, it, it was just, it was awesome. I'm so glad we saw it. But now the harsh realization that tomorrow's Friday. Yep. It's not the weekend. <laughs> there's still one more, there's still one more weekday. But I wanted to uh, check in with you guys and share that bit. And also, uh, that's it. I love you. You guys, happy Saturday. It's about 11 o'clock. We are heading out the door with way too much highlighter on my face as usual. It's Daniel's birthday party. We told everyone at 11.30, so we're gonna get there a little bit early to see if they need our help setting up or doing anything. It's one of those places, it's, I call it a children's casino. So usually just show up and then leave and like they take care of everything, so it's awesome. But before we get there and I share some of the fun with you guys, I wanted to show you my outfit of the day. I have a hard time planning a cute outfit for a kid's function because I wanna look cute, but I always don't want to look for my comfort level. I wanna look respectable and not like stuff's hanging out. And I'm not sure if I did the right choice today. So I was telling Parker, I was like, you know what? I think I'm gonna wear white jeans and my chambray shirt as usual. And something told me, don't do that. Think about this. Is somebody wearing a new shirt? Is somebody wearing their new $10 Walmart shirt that don't nobody have to know about? It's so soft and comfortable. <laughs> look at that, isn't that nice? <laughs> so. You look great. Uh, something told me, I was like, you know, my go-to cute for a, fam a family or kid function is white jeans and a chambray shirt. Literally the same outfit I was gonna wear today was what I wore to his birthday last year. So glad I looked it up and I'm also really glad that on the iPhone, I don't know if you guys knew this, but you can go to your photos and at the top you can write a certain date. You can write like May 2020 or April 17th, 2018 and it'll pull up all the pictures. Or you can write um, Steven and it'll pull up all of Steven's pictures. Or... <laughs> I knew I was gonna say something. I actually don't know a Steven, so hi Steven. Hey, <laughs> so, like I'll put up Mateo 2020 and all of Mateo 2020 pictures will come up, so it's pretty handy. Anyway, I was wearing the same outfit, so today I thought, you know what? A, I gotta show my pandas that I'm tan. I don't know if, you know, I really didn't wanna say anything at the beginning of this vlog. I just wanted to give you guys the opportunity to see it for yourself. So, I did get a tan last weekend, and I'm gonna even out the backside tomorrow. <laughs> Rather, today. I'm gonna even out the backside today. So right now, I look an Oreo cookie that got split in half. So this is what we're going with. And I'm keeping on the denim jacket, don't freak out. We're going with a, just a standard classic denim jacket. I was gonna do oversized, but I don't, I can't pull off the oversized look. I don't think it's flattering on me, especially because I'm so tall. It looks like I'm, I'm like wearing my dad's jacket, you know? So I got just a regular Levi's denim jacket. This is actually a camisole dress from Nordstrom that I bought years ago and have never had the chance to wear. I took off the tags today. So it has that little drapey neck, which is nice, especially for those of you that got nothing in this department. So it gives you a nice little illusion. And then it's, I think this is called midi length, so it's right below the knee, and it has a split. If I get a little self-conscious about this, I do have a slip underneath that I tucked underneath my bra strap, and so if I get uncomfortable, I can just kind of release it, and it will come down and cover this whole slit, and it'll just look like it's a layer underneath. It's the same length and everything, so I thought this through, because I'm an overthinker, and I get really self-conscious sometimes, and I just like to be prepared. And I just paired it with some white sneakers. I was gonna wear Converse, but they're really dirty and I haven't had a chance to wash them. So I just pulled out these guys. 
but I want to look cute. Plus, since we're going to a children's casino, I think this will be a really easy identifier for the kids if they're lost, if they need help, if they're hungry, if they can't find their mom or whatever, then they'll be like, there's a traffic cone. Hey, traffic cone mom, where are you? I'll be like, here guys right here <laughs> anyway so that is it for this saturday morning i will vlog a little bit of the footage so i can show you guys how much fun we had and how awful walmart messed up the cake again do you guys remember last year's the lightning bolt that didn't look like a lightning bolt it was kind of hanging off the edge of the cake pan yeah so this year i i thought i went with a safe choice i really did they somehow managed to be disappointing but you know what's also awesome children don't care it's the pull apart cupcakes and they taste delicious. I DIY'd the cake topper, so I'll show you guys that. So look out for it in the footage. I'll make sure to include it. I don't think I'm gonna talk in that part of the vlog, but just look out for it. And that's it, we're gonna come home and the boys actually go back to dad's. So they're with dad, but they stay with dad for the weekend. So Parker and I are having a relaxing day. He's not on call today. He has this new schedule now where he's on call for a week and then off, on call for a week and off. And he's supposed to be on call, but he asks for uh, coverage. He asks for someone to cover for him. So we're just gonna go to the birthday, help that, you know, enjoy. <laughs> enjoy it and then come home and have like a sunny pool day relaxing outside maybe have some adult beverages which also reminds me remind me to tell you about my latest adult beverage obsession if you guys like tangy salty spicy fruity like think like tamarind pineapple tahine like that kind of savory spicy sweet Mexican-y, you know, type drinks, like micheladas. Mm. I found someone that may end up causing me a problem. Mm -hmm.